Those options, the block, the Syndra. Will we see a third mid lane ban? No, the Renekton's still going to be taken away. They do not want to allow for that blind pick. Scano and Yone, the same for R7 here. Alongside that, they banned Ariana. And there we go. Three mid laners removed from the pool. Wukong has been let through. We'll see if Oddi decides that's his cup of tea today or whether something else comes out of the jungle. Obviously, Oddi, very experienced on the Wukong, very confident on that champion. It is looking like, I mean, it's already locked. Yep. Jack's first pick once again. So why not just run back a similar draft? You could just go for the Cassante and the Poppy. It worked for you in game one. I want to see a shift in the AD carry priority, though. I didn't like the Zaya. I think that it didn't give you that much control in the mid lane. Ooh, Ooh. they're going to shift over to the Hui. They want to guarantee a control mage in the mid lane. This will give... I guess they were worried about it being taken away from them because I like what they did before where they locked it on three, mm -hmm. you know, because then if Pain Gaming wants to lock in their mids, at the very least, they're going to be doing it blind. But I guess they're under the assumption that the priority bot lane for Pain Gaming is what's going to come through. And now with the Lucian here, you can still ban out these mids because you know the Nami's going to follow up. Yeah, Huey, the third most picked for Jinkedo this year. So not too surprising that R7 are like, OK, you want a control mage, you're probably going to go towards that way. Corky and Azir, the top two. Uh, and then Ari sitting in number four. Lucian Nami already locked in. The Poppy in the way for R7. That's a Cassante. And there we Should go. Come as a surprise. Very similar first set of picks for both teams. In fact, exactly the same for Pain Gaming. Now, reminder that the Poppy is, of course, a flex pick, but I'm expecting this to go into the jungle once more. R7. We imagine that they're going to look to continue banning away mid laners. You can take away things like the Tristana. You can take away the Akali. There's a lot of options for you to limit that pool even more. They're taking their time with this one. They really want to think about what they want to remove. And do you, do you ever get rid of the Ari here just because it's comfort for Jinkedo? But there's the Akali that we, we've already seen here at Worlds. I don't think Ari really can win the push matchup into the way. I feel like Huey, I mean, as just soon as he gets matchup, matchup, it's just honest. farm, as you say. Maybe a Tristana, a possibility. Nautilus once again taken away by Pain Gaming. They went for. This last time as well, so. If you wanted to target Jinkato specifically, Talir is something you could consider getting rid of. Yeah. Something that he is very comfortable on, one of his all-time better champions. But instead, they're going to take away the Vi. Uh, they don't want to allow that dive threat access onto the back line. That does mean that the Sejuani is open, though. I think the Kalista makes sense. Uh, Seo has already shown that He's not willing to play the Jin. Instead, he's going to go for the Zyra again. I don't love this. Yeah, the thing about it was they got put behind early, and it should have been more punishing than it was. Oh, yeah. Haney coming across and getting a double kill is the only thing that saved that bot lane. And on the way, you can still move. You, you get early-ish push if you can get that lost chapter, but not at level, you know, at level six, I think it was, that he moved across earlier on. There's the Sejuani, non-committal engage against at Worlds for the first time in the history of the Liga Latin America. They can be the history makers near an evolutionary uh, stage for the league as well. Of course, America's coming in next year with LLA being combined with other, region, other leagues in that region. For R7, it would be a wonderful topper to 10 years of this rivalry. For Pain Gaming, a look to return to the world stage for the first time since 2015 for them and for the first time since 2016 for the CB lot. I also just think that uh, confidence is crucial, right? We, we look at that previous R7 game, and that's like a big game for them, mm -hmm. you know, especially for either of these teams qualifying for the main stage. The it's only getting possible. harder from here. <laughs> it's true. And, and truthfully, it, the reason why these, these regions and these teams have struggled to qualify for the main stage for so long is because the competition has only been made har harder. The format shifts, the introduction of fourth seeds and third seeds into the playing stage from all of the major regions has increased the caliber of competition. And so for R7 and Pain Gaming to have this opportunity to play against each other to qualify is reminiscent of the old international wildcard qualification tournaments that we used to have and yep. how these teams and regions often found their way into the main stage in the past. Once again, we see Titan and Kuri gaining control of this bot lane bush. The oracles on Leon's not able to clear out that ward as well. The script is different. Yes. <laughs> the ward staying alive. Just, it's 
such a difficult lane matchup to play, right? We've talked about the sustaining game one from that gleaming quill. Especially quill, but... if you miss it. Yeah, well, I mean, so did Kuri. Kuri healed himself and didn't quite uh, connect with the ebb and flow as well. So, 0-0 zero, zero for both the supports <laughs> early on here, but there we go. And that's the pressure that you can put on Summon Airy as well, just ticking over that little bit of extra damage. Oh, Titan oh, and Kuri yeah. will get that level two off this minion. And Leon Senseo just respecting that, backing all the way away. Now, the mid lane matchup this time round, Ari just doesn't have push early. Sorry, she doesn't. <laughs> it would be nice if she did, but she doesn't. Um, and in terms of early trading, Quay actually has a lot of tools in his kit to be able to trade effectively. One of the new, uh, I say new, but one of the combos I recently learned about on Quay is you actually do a double. W-E, where you get the empowered autos. Okay, you yeah. Combine it with the more, the mm -hmm. clasp, I think it's E-E. Yeah. Um, and it's a really effective way to snap, apply the passive, which is a quick trade without expending the Q, which means that then as they're running away, you can then hit them with the Q on top of that. Yeah. You um, also get the uh, mana back from Stirring Lights, right? The empowered right. autos, so. On top of that, you can also just do like a QE combo to push the wave, and if mm -hmm. they're in line, then you hit them with something else, right? And you apply the passive, and it's just, it's obnoxious for Ari, is the yes. TLDR. <laughs> It was off the back of Kaney, really, in game one that R7 were able to take that victory here. Pain Gaming have the early lead, as expected. She's done. And Curry getting the push down here. Bubble just wide. As Karaoke here to defend, he's going to be able to pick up this first Scuttle Crab. No dive in the offing. A lot of farm lost underneath the tower there, though. But the knockup also causing a small caster minion to be dropped to the tower. Quick base going to come through, but it's going to be interrupted. Pain now looking for a quick push. Maybe they can even threaten the dive, but that's why R7 just feels so concerned. And this is the concern that we talked about coming mm -hmm. into this matchup again. We already saw what happened in the first game. Immediately, Pain Game were able to replicate the exact same circumstance. They're going to track to see whether or not the bot lane has gone back to base. The early base is going to come in from Kuri. And you imagine that Chitan is going to stick around. As, ooh, double scuttle on the horizon yeah. for Karaoke. Really nice for Karaoke here. Visor as well getting the push in the top lane, meaning that he can come down and defend this. Oddi was looking. TP invested by Jinkedo in the mid lane. Karaoke is going to come across here. Jinkedo doesn't have the charm. Hits that onto Huey. Jinkedo will take about half his health, but maybe a little bit more. Almost 80% of it falls. He's going to have to back away. Pops the potion, but can't really stay in this lane anymore. Nicely done. Just a bit of pressure down. And with the TP already used, it means that Jinkedo is just very sad given his circumstances. Level 3 still, though, for the bot lane of R7. It's a big wave as well. Chitan and Kuri have the opportunity to outplay this heal early on. Oddi with a knock back onto Kuri. They're waiting for his flash here. The bubble comes out. Leons goes in for the engage. Takes a tower shot with a blade caller. Sale gets on the board. R7 with first blood in this fight. Chitan still trying to trade back in, but as soon as Oddi turns his head back around, Chitan has to respect it. But so much farm is still lost. You'll see the gold that basically all this has done is equalize it because of how much experience and gold has just been lost to the tower. Now this will increase a little bit as the wave is now being caught by Seo. But a nice play from Oddi. A play that was very much needed given the amount of pressure that Pain Gaming's bot lane was putting down onto R7s. And uh, at the very least, the gold will now be equalized in the bot lane two versus two. It's just the neutralizer, right? You you know you're losing this matchup. If you can get it even-ish, that's a win for you. If you get out of this lane with only a couple of hundred gold between the two AD carries, you are very happy. Why is it getting the push here in the top lane? Knocked back by those and Tofos, jumps back in with the leap strike, but some are just really trying to clear out the wave more than anything. It looks like Visor actually having a much better time in this lane than he did in game one. Kaney here. Should be aware. You can see Karaoke waiting in the wings. Oddy's on his way across, though, and should be able to cover this as Karaoke backs away. Oddy was looking for those grubs, but doesn't have the push in top, so immediately begins to step away. Goes across, tries to steal away some of these honeyfruit. Now, he doesn't need them, but Wiser or Karaoke could have done with those. So Oddy takes them. Leon's comes across to help out, looking for these grubs. It looks like Visor is going to back away. Does have the TP, but I think the first three grubs will be going over to R7. Karaoke just keeps walking forward. It's a magical ability. The collapse beginning to come in as Kuri is pinging that he has joined the battle. Summit half HP. Wiser TPs back in with that sheen complete. Oddy looks for another Karaoke, able to get there in time. Oddy has to flash away. Summit could do the same, but doesn't need to. Two grubs over to PNG.
it was a bit of a misplay there from Oddy. He wanted to smite the Grub, get the level up, level 5, gives him a bit of extra HP, he can walk out to safety. Unfortunately, 1 HP! Yeah. <laughs> so he didn't quite have the damage to secure the Grub, which means that Karaoke can then walk in, secure the objective, and convert it into 2. Small experience lead for Karaoke, going to be able to get the level 6 early. I wonder if he's looking for the red buff. Top lane has push. It feels a little greedy, but Oddy doesn't have the flash. Karaoke. Stepping his way in, you can see the immediate move from Kaney in the mid lane. Summit here. There's the counter strike used by Wiser, which gives Summit a moment of freedom. I say as he just dies! That's the Grandmaster's might from Wiser. Just gets the kill. Cheetan diving in in the bot lane as well. Has that level six. Leon's going to try and block it. Sayo almost falls to the ebb and flow. All across the board, it's coming up pain. So these are the individual talents we were talking about in game one. The laning phase is where we can see these pain gaming, pain gaming members really shine. Wiser was struggling in this matchup in game one. He was falling behind. I think he got frozen on by Summit, which resulted in this huge experience deficit early on in the lane. But this time around, he finds a solo kill onto Summit. A much needed confidence boost and also a big statement. They ran back. Four out of the five champions yeah. that they lost in, in the previous game and said, you know what, we misplayed. We know we can get the better of you. We just need to take the Syndra away. They've done it. And now they've already found themselves uh, nice leads, both in top and AD. Nice. Right, trust in your plays, trust in your players, right? Jinkedo has had a great year on this army. I think about a 78% win rate on it after losing game one. Shouldn't remove your trust from him. Summit here, after the Counter-Strike is used and he's able to escape it, I think he's fine. But Wiser is all the wiser for this play. I mean, Q, W in, and then flash, ulti into the uh, the passive third hit. Yep. Ooh. I think he also Ooh. got the W as well. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Summer was not expecting that. Had his own flash as well. Only had the opportunity to get away from it. Oddy, hex flashing, but with Cheetan dashing back, won't be able to find and engage. The first Drake is still on the cards for either of these teams. Last time we saw a Grubs for Drake exchange. Here we saw a Grubs for Grubs exchange between the two. Interested to see how these fights play out. It's, uh, early dragons in the year of the game so far in this series has been very timid. Neither team really has gotten too chaotic. Or, and honestly, I was kind of impressed from game one with the amount of cross mapping that was going on. Mm -hmm. Pain Gaming had a tendency to overstack in terms of members to be able to secure picks or objectives, and R7 was constantly actually trading on the map, whether it be for pot tower, mid tower, various uh, neutrals. See if something similar happens in this game with Pain Gaming having the lead that they do, not having to be scared of a 4 0 Syndra after 10 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> it makes it slightly easier for you when you know that Unleash Power isn't an option. And look at Cheetan. Yeah. I mean, perfect CS right now has been completely dominating in the two versus two, has pretty much a full level of experience advantage over his laning counterpart. Root comes through, dashes away, the tidal wave used, just Big in though. case. R7 wanted to go any further. I, like, I think if Leon's had been six, would have made a little bit more sense because obviously he would have had the quickness, but at can hit, him only having this? level five, they can dive at Fetty. Whether it will go well or not is a sight we have Look yet to behold. He's coming. Here we go. Wiser, no flash. Used it before. Summit has the all out. She's done there with the culling. Leon's just going to tank up as much of it as he can. Oddy going in. There's the not bad Severus Pheasants coming in as well. And there's the all out. And they can definitely damn dive this, Betty. Severing Bolt from long range for a little bit of an assist from Kaney. But that was all Summit and Oddy. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised they made that work, really. Because Wiser, he knew the dive was coming. He was doing his best to keep the minions from going underneath the tower. But Oddy made the smart call of knowing we can't wait here any longer. We've got to execute upon this. And we've got to make it work. So. The beautiful part of what Oddy did was that he flashes over the wall and actually gets Wiser out of tower range, yep. meaning that now Summit and Oddy have a lot less to be afraid of when it came to committing to that dive. With the extra damage that they got from Kaney, they were able to secure that kill. Important thing for Pain though is that they are going to get at least four grubs, likely five in totality. They may stop at four, five does give you a little bit of extra true damage, but you're not getting more might spawning from it. Karaoke will go back and look towards that fifth one. With the push that you already have from Cheetan and Kuri, it makes sense. They're actually even moving them up towards the top side with that uh, 
bolstering of the defensive of the tower, falling off for 10 minutes. They can get more plates in top lane if they're up here. Resetting, defending Karaoke in case anyone decided to fight him around the grubs, and now can try and push Summit back. Yeah, I mean, you make a great point. By having all these extra grubs, it's just so much easier to siege into these objectives. And it's just like a small advantage that you can gain, because especially you look at the bot wave, Wise is able to push this one through, but he may have overstepped. Does have flash. He'll He's get level one nine. plate. He is level nine, as you say. Knocked back, not tanking the tower. Counter-Strike comes out, nice. rooted up with the Blade Caller. Visor does still have the Flash. Will he use it or will he save it? I think the answer is save. He'll pop the Grandmaster's might. That's a much shorter cooldown. In the end, he falls. A good gank there from Oddy. Yeah, I mean, just a misstep from Wiser. He really can't afford to be pushing out alone, especially with the jungler on the top side of the map. Summit respecting the threat of a dive. Of course, ultimately, the advantage that Pain Gaming wanted was access to this top lane tower. Yep. By pushing in that bot wave, yes, they do lose their top laner, but they're already going to start chipping away this tower, and they can funnel more gold into Cheatan's pockets. So, going to be doing something similar, but not at the same rate, and you're seeing the value of those grubs live. Oh, Glacial Prison used. Leon's here to defend. Ease the charm once again. Karaoke's going to get caught up in the charm. Oddy coming in with that steadfast presence, smiling despair as well on the Sejuani. Knocked up with the Keeper's verdict. Karaoke cannot escape the hammer from Oddy. Who brings it down? R7 reacting well to a mid lane play. Jinkado not really able to make much off the back of that play. And again, it's members of Pain just not respecting the numbers advantage that R7 have. Like, yes, on, on paper, you're sitting there saying, Kane, he's overextended in mid. But the only reason why he's overextended is because he knows that his team is right behind him. He's playing with the knowledge that he has Oddi and Leon's to support him. And Leon's on this Rakan once again, demonstrating his expertise on the champion. Great pr peel provided. TP available for Kaney, but instead he's going to go catch Bot Wave. And with the cannon there, this should comfortably go over to Seo as well. So even though Payne are finding advantages in the bot lane, the rest of the map is very quickly falling apart. And it is still a slight gold lead for Payne overall. About 500 ahead. You can see the lead for Cheetan there. 600 gold in advantage. Alongside that, Kuri has an equal lead, has now finished that Imperial Mandate on the Nami, which just gives the Lucian even more damage. You can see the culling threat Ooh. onto Seiya. We've already seen an AD carry die to a culling. We're not expecting the damage. Leon's coming in from the side. We'll be able to dash back and join up with his teammate, but might stay around to defend. Can, of course, use that duo recall, the lover's recall right at the last moment if he so desires. But full HP and with still two wards in his pocket, he'll stay out on the map for the moment. Kane, he needs to be a little cautious here because Kuri and Karioka are making a beeline for this blue side jungle just to defend Wiser on the push. More gold in the pockets of Pain. Summit won't be able to take the tower in the top lane as a recompense, but he will get a bit of chip damage onto it. I mean, a lot of the gold that Pain Gaming have is thanks to these two out of towers that they've been able to secure. As R7 leads in terms of the kills. Oddy's by himself. Yeah, there. he started the Herald. I did notice this happening, but once again, he's completely isolated. Glacial Prison not quite connecting onto Oddy. Summit there to jump in as well. Kuri and Chitan have the push. They'll force Leon's away. The Rift Herald resets. Karaoke still looking for more. Lands the permafrost. Summit's now going to be flanked as Chitan's on his way across. Hex flash from Oddy straight. Face planting into the wall, but gets over afterwards. There's the quickness as well, but this is only a poppy. The Keeper's Verdict stopped with the tidal wave. Kaney. Came in from the top side, Summit looking for a little bit more. Cheetan flashes the wall, spiraling despair is on him, but despair only felt by R7. Wiser here to join the party, a 1v2 for the moment. Seo trying to escape, has that feather storm, but the empowered lamppost from Visor slaps him into the dirt. Skirmish after skirmish, Pain Gaming get exactly what they wanted. Not a full on 5v5, not a front to back brawl, but Oddy being isolated around the Herald. Summit using his skills to provide peel. The bot lane of Pain Gaming catching Kaney isolated in the top lane. There's not a Syndra burst that they have to be worried about. He's fully confident that he can commit to that play and find that kill. The kill score was four to one moments ago. Now they find themselves four to four with a two and a half K gold lead. It's a huge lead now for Pain Gaming. Next Drake on the cards for them as well. They can continue stacking those up. It is a Chem Drake, so not the biggest priority, but we'll see what the soul is. We have Cloud and Chem already off the cards. The aggression from Chitan as well, flashing the wall straight into the face of that spiraling despair. Kaney really couldn't react in time, couldn't get that fear down. Seo here, no feather storm for him. And Leon's realizes he needs to help out his teammate. This tower almost down, those mites helping out, of course. The wave cleared just in time. Chitan stepping forward will get the auto down. Already has a BF sword alongside that Essence Reaver. It's three tasks to zero, Medic. Yep. 
PNG have just been leveraging the strength of this bot lane all around the map. Wiser, while he did get caught out a few times, he's still a very powerful Jackson. Now they've set their sights on Summit, who's still trying to chip away at this tower. There he is, Summit in a side lane. It's kind of what he does. <laughs> Gets caught out a little bit overextended, doesn't know where anyone else is on the map right now. And Jinkedo, Kuri, and Jitan are looking to show him what's up. And Tofo's come out. Jinkedo uses the Spirit Rush. Summit's able to dash away. Flashes the charm as well. But Karaoke and Visor like having none of this. Karaoke dashes in with the Arctic Assault. Summit doesn't really have many tools left at his disposal. And they're standing on the right side of the wall to avoid the all out. He bought some time, which allows I mean, Kaney some time on the bot lane tower and a little bit for Sayo in mid. I will say they sent five people top. Medic, Gotta kill him, buddy. But I, Gotta kill him. But I don't think it He's was Kassante, worth it. Buddy. I don't, I, Four and a half thousand HP, I, 15 second CDs. I, I mean, yes. And they get the rift hold. I mean, they do, Perfection. and that's valuable, I will acknowledge, but they gave up mid-tier one and bot-tier one. No, mid-tier one still stands. They gave up some damage on the mid-tier one. Oh, no, top-tier yeah. one. Top-tier one they did and give yeah, up. Yeah, so two towers ended up falling, and the only good news is that the top tower, I mean, didn't give local gold over, I yeah, guess. that's true. But uh, sure, you killed Summit, your gold difference has decreased a little bit. But we saw in the MasterCard lane economy snapshot for a second there just how far Cheetan is ahead. A thousand gold, his lead oh, yeah. in the bot lane. He also, the, like Lucian Nami is just such a deadly combination. Infinity Edge and Essence Reaver for him, alongside that Imperial Mandate, he is absolutely blasting now. Mm -hmm. This is a very strong Lucian indeed. Cheetan, a player that, uh, I mean, he's not a a rookie, no. right? Like, he's I been around a while. I remember, I remember when we cast him for his first time on the international mm -hmm. stage, right? I remember and forgetting his name in an interview. Yeah. <laughs> in the middle, of, it was one of my first ever international casts. So I just entirely forgot his name. Yeah, it's it's crazy yep. to think that he's been competing now for seven years, and uh, the man is a is an experienced veteran, and and it's great to see that, especially in, in situations like this on the world stage, he's able to play with this level of confidence because it's what you need with pain, with the backs against the wall, down a game in this best of three. It's that confidence that they're going to need. As Dragon, about three minutes away, a minute and a half till Baron. It's at this stage where we sometimes see playing teams crumble, fall mm -hmm. apart. Leveraging your strength in the side lanes, setting up proper vision control around the, the, the jungle, leveraging that prio into moving into sides, controlling objectives. Getting lost in the fights, getting caught out is often what we'll see where these mid games can devolve into chaos and skirmishing. Now, the good news is that Lucian is a champion that thrives in these sort of chaotic skirmish environments. So they're definitely set up for success as another culling comes down. And so is immediately forced off the mid wave. But Pain Gaming, they don't really have much to play for right now. So it's just a matter of catching waves, controlling vision, and working towards those next core items. I like the, the argument behind dash forward, use the culling, then force Sayo to back, and then Rift Held off the back of that, right? You're you denying the enemy one man, so you can try and get a charge on a tier two. Probably not going to take the full tier two until you manage to win a fight, but I do like the idea of that little bit of chip damage, especially uh, with the Rift Held still being available for Karaoke. But at the moment, as you say, just waves shoved out, waves caught. It's a nice game of uh, back and forth between these two teams. Kind of has to be. Of course, R7 would love to be able to secure that mid-tier one, but it's extremely difficult when Cheetan has so much control over it. Yep. Ari's wave clear at this point is also pretty comfortable, which means that they should be able to hold on to this wave, sorry, this tower for a good while, giving them a lot more control when it comes to access to the river. Kaney once again being shadowed by his support. This means that Jinkedo going to have to showcase that respect. But it's PNG setting up nicely around the dragon. They have the push in mid, they've got the push in bot. They haven't really invested much vision just yet, but here it starts to come through. Yeah, just trying to get that superficial vision moved into a little bit of a deeper spot. Drake up in a minute's time would be the third of the game for Pain Gaming. There's the culling once again into the back of Oddi. Sayo taking a chunk as well. And you can see Oddi half HP. Glacial Prism coming out as well. Leon's gets the charm onto the back line and the spiraling to spare his career as well. Storm Surge Prox and Leon's goes down, but the support's traded by the mid laners. Keeping track of what was used in that exchange as well. A lot of summon has gone from the bot side of the map of R7. Ari still has the ultimate two in exchange for Kaney's. Looks like he's going to go back to base, which means that this dragon is going to be a difficult one to contest. There's the oh, ult. Grasping more, just clipping Jinkedo as he tried to jump in. The ult goes out, as you say, that Spirit Rush charm just wide. Didn't connect onto Sayo or Kaney. Sayo does still have that cleanse. 
Pain Gaming just trying to deny as much away from R7 as possible. Take the camps, take their vision, and hopefully take their lives and take us to a game three. The supports return to the map. Leon's close to level nine. A couple extra stats on the horizon. There they are secured. And here we go once again. Set up around the dragon. Wiser with nice push on the bot wave. So is just going to be started. Yeah, he's just aggroing the dragon. Slows you as well, this ocean drake. Why is it? Looks like he's going to back, does have the TP. R7 should know he was there because he was clearing out a ward. Drake down to 3,000 summit on that front line. Rift Hell charging through that mid lane. Now good Keeper's Verdict will knock him back and Oli secures the Drake. Leon's dashing forward, dashes back with the grand entrance. Riser still looking for that flank position, but he is veered away by the way. Can they get out of here is the big question. Titan dashing forward, Pathmaker out. Why is it trying to get onto the back line? But Jinkato has been caught up with a spiraling despair. Falls low, Keeney falling lower though. Wiser takes the kill. Another Counter-Strike lands the stun. It's Oddi who has to flash away. Meanwhile, down towards the bottom side, Chitan is fighting with Seo and he takes him out. Even through the feather storm, Chitan finds the kill. In the skirmishes and in the chase, Pain Gaming are able to find more kills. They do concede the dragon, denying them sole point, but potentially they open up a barren opportunity they're able to push in mid. They make their way towards the objective. All five members are alive. And with only Oddi there to potentially steal, Pain Gaming are set up to bring us one to one. You can see the pings from uh, Pain Gaming. They're like, we need vision behind this pit because that Poppy has a Hex Flash. And damned if we get out of worlds on a Hex Flash smite. Oddi currently working on those Razor Beaks. Tinkedo here dodges away from the knockup. Oddi just needs to be stopped. Orb of Deception coming out means that Hex Flash can't quite be online yet. Glacial Prison used as well. This is good so far from Pain Gaming to keep the enemy jungler out of the pit. Pain Gaming will take the Baron. And now the next three minutes well in their control. A worthwhile trade for Pain Gaming as they're able to just run down their opposition. Nice knockback from the ultimate of Oddi. Good damage initially onto Leon's, but notice at the start of the fight, R7 is just straight onto the retreat. You're seeing the difference between the Huey and Syndra, where you're so much more scared to face check, and then Kana takes a very dangerous path through the jungle, allowing for the Jack's easy access onto that mid laner, flashes in, knowing that there's little that they can do to stop him. Meanwhile, the AD carry is left completely isolated. Cheetan working with his jungler to secure that kill results in a ban. Shigeto has to flash here. Oddi looking for something. Leon's going in with the quickness as well. The charm lands onto Leon's though. He tries to dash back forward. Knocked out. The charm expired by that point. Chitan now pushing in the bottom lane as R7 need to retreat. They need to get back, but they don't have those empowered recalls. And now with the Baron buff, Pain Gaming pushing in, looking for those inhibitor towers. They have two waves synced up right now. The mid wave almost taken out by Kaney. But the bot lane inhibitor already down to a third HP. The wave, only a cannon minion there, now bolstered. PNG continue to push forward. Cheetan knows there's no quickness. There's no threat from Leon's diving in. He still has that cleanse as well. The mid inhib tower stands with a sliver of HP. And for the moment, R7 are able to hold, hold on to their inhibitors. Cheetan and Kuri waiting around the corner. Holy hell! Seo almost gets atomized by the damage there from Cheetah and the Rapid Fire Cannon doing absolute work for him right now. It will take him a while to get through Summit, but still. Devastation so far from PNG, from Chitan, a 3,000 gold lead for him. Wiser as well, two and a half K ahead. I just have to say how much I admire the fact that Pain Gaming decided to run back such a similar draft and say, our ball lane won before, Charm they can do it again. On Kana, he's just able to survive. The tidal wave coming out, Kana will be able to get back to Base, the flash forward, Summit looking for something here as well. As Pain Gaming were able to disengage, Kuri gets out of Summit's embrace. The mid lane inhibitor tower still somehow standing. Pain Gaming were looking for it, but couldn't quite find that tiny little bit more damage to take out Kana. Wow. Such a shift. And I think what's super impressive to me is how, for the most part, when R7 got the lead, they largely cleaned out the game very yeah. smoothly. And then Pain Gaming in a very similar fashion, they've been able to open up the inhibitor on the bot side of the map. The mid lane tower has taken significant damage. And as long as Pain Gaming continue to take this patient approach, they know that they have the item advantage. They know they're so much stronger. And with the Baron wearing off, they can just set it for the next dragon and continue to play out this game methodically. A 7K gold lead. They're looking to bring us to game three. And in convincing fashion. Yeah. They should be able to do it from this sort of position. Kaney is 
at two and a half items, but you can see how that gold difference has just exploded for Pain Gaming. Not willing to bow out of Worlds just yet. A Swiss spot on the line. The CB lol, eight years since the region last made it for Pain 9. Obviously, R7 fighting for the right to be the first ever LLA representatives in that world Swiss stage. But right now, they are fighting against a brick wall. Pain are very willing just to play it methodically, play it slow. Your soul is delayed. Obviously, you won the fight around the last Drake, but I don't think R7 are going to give you a fight around this one. They just want to defend, want to clear out these minions, try and get Kaney two, three items. I genuinely think this time around, R7 just don't actually have the damage. Yeah. Like, I think in game one, the fact that Syndra got fed was obviously helpful, but Syndra just changed the dynamic of the comp so much True. compared to what is a very traditional control mage in Huey, who, like, I guess has good amount of burst, but just the damage isn't comparable. Summit. Gets the Entofos, Glacial Prison going wide. Summit goes in with the all out, but that's half his health just gone immediately. And alongside it, the rest of it. Chitan on a killing spree on this Lucian. Summit maybe could have got out when that Glacial Prison missed, but Karaoke was looking for the flash predict. And now Seo down to half HP as well. The mid lane in hip will be forfeit pretty sharpish here as Pain Gaming begin to raise the base of R7 to the ground. A nine-day performance between Game 1 and Game 2 for Summit, getting caught out multiple times. His death may lead to Game 2 falling to the hands Jinkado of Pain Gaming. In with the charm, only onto Oddi. That's a tidal wave as well. Karaoke caught up with the Blade Caller. Wiser just looking for the towers. Leon's tries to get in, but an Arctic Assault stops him in his track. Another charm cleansed immediately by Seo. Has to use the, use the Feather Storm defensively. Wiser there, the grasping more on him. It's still not enough damage to get through the Sterax, the Sundered Sky, the Trinity Force that Wiser has collected across this game. A flawless game from Cheetan. His spacing, his aggression in the fights, able to do so much damage as well with the charms finally starting to connect from Jinkedo. They secure two inhibitors. They're on soul point. Ooh, base is gonna come through. And now the Baron becomes the next big objective for Pain Gaming to play for. No reason not to take your time. They could, if they want to, just commit to the top tower. They know with Super Minions sieging in the bottom mid, they could even send Ari off onto one of the lanes with the threat of the TP. The bases are a little disconnected on the side of Pain Gaming just because Jinkedo's recall got interrupted. But they're in a great spot. Look at this wave on the bottom side of the map. Always the threat of a TP with the potential end on the line. Only a single Nexus tower stands. Yeah, Kaney's going to be the one sent across to deal with that summit. It's a bit of a culling, but with the TP coming in, Jinkedo just wants to join up with his team. Sharpish. Kaney should be able to get the push down towards that bottom side, but R7 really don't have an avenue to approach this. And no way into their own jungle, no vision around the Baron. They may have one ward in the pit looking at the minimap right now. They have one just up towards the top side. Yeah, they do. So Pain Gaming haven't truly denied that vision, but if you just play in the enemy face for three minutes, you know those wards are going to expire anyway. Don't have to rush it. You are well in control of this game. 8,000 gold ahead. Looks like Karaoke now going to jump into the pit. And they still haven't used an Oracles. So this is fully known by R7. Jinkedo there looking for the charm. Oddi poking his head around the corner. Seo doing the same. Currently, they only see Chitan and Karaoke there. Riser looking for that flank position. Summit on the front line. TP coming in by Kana. Glacial Prism across the wall. Sayo low with that feather storm. Wiser jumps in immediately onto Kana. He's knocked into the wall. Summit trying to survive the front line. Wiser gets one already. And Jinkedo is dashing across that wall. Spiraling Despair is the name of the game for R7. The way ultimate does nothing. Jinkedo has to flash away from the Molten Fisher. Oddi gets the slam into the wall. But he's slammed into a coffin by PNG. Wiser just gets so much access onto the back line. A great flank from him from the Krugs allows him to just decimate the R7 carries and clean up the fight for PNG. With the Nexus in their eyes, PNG are going to bring us to one and one. One more for the road, CB Lol. One more for the road. Liga Latin America, Kana and Leon still can't even survive on their fountain. They are aced, their Nexus falls, and we're going all the way to game three. A commanding response with an extremely similar draft to game one. Pain Gaming's bot lane did so much work in this game. Cheetan with a 5-0-7 scoreline, Wiser with a solo kill. 
they've done an incredible job of bouncing back, which means that there's only one game left to determine who will qualify for the main stage. Don't go anywhere, because as we